All right, guys, welcome back. Beautiful afternoon out here, and I'm out here in my red pine forest, and obviously I'm taking down a few trees. I'm in the midst of it, actually. I took down these two red pines because I need some more lumber, but the siding on my equipment shed, I know I keep telling you guys I'm going to finish it, and that's the honest truth, but if you can imagine, if I'm not going to Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever to buy lumber, i got to come out here and get it, and there's a few steps before sawing, this being one of them. So what I'm doing, I'm just finishing off limbing this tree here, then I'm going to cut it to length. And once I get it cut to length, then I'll haul it over to the sawmill, which today is not going to be that big of a challenge because the sawmill is literally right there. So periodically I'm cutting trees that need to come down that are uh, pretty much on a main trail, this being one of them. You guys can see there, I cut the red pine right beside this maple. The reason I cut that is this red pine will shade out and outcompete this maple for resources because it's bigger. And this maple probably won't make it if I leave it there. At least it won't grow nice and straight. So I cut her down. Same thing holds true here. You guys can see some of the underbrush coming up. You can also see a nice white pine there. So I cut the red pine there so that the other ones can jump up and we can get other trees like the uh, oak there popping up after a few years. So I cut from right here for that reason. And behind me there, you can see my tractor. I got the grapple on the front there. That's going to make short work of moving these things. The overall length is nine feet. That's the height I need for my door and some of the siding. I am measuring that with this thing. I can get it off my belt. I put a carabiner on there and I hook it on my belt. One of you guys told me that'll prevent uh, prevent me from essentially ripping the uh, loophole on my, on my jeans. Anyways, what I'm dealing with here to measure the distance is uh, this thing. This is the original loggers tape by the US Tape Company. This thing, if I remember right, I want to say it's 50, is it 75 meters or 75 feet? I think it's 75 feet. Anyways, this thing's pretty solid. I like it. I've used it for a little while now. It's got this, uh, whoop, it's got this handy little clip on the end here. And what you do is basically you start with it in that position. I can get a good handle on it. You start with it in that position. You hook it onto the end of a log you just cut. And then you go down and you do your measuring, but you don't have to come back and unhook it because essentially you just pull on it and obviously it's easier said than done but trust me it's not that hard of a pull and it goes straight like that so you can see that little snap mechanism there very very handy saves a bit of time this thing here it is a metal tape it's got a coating on it so that it uh, goes in and out quite nicely I'm liking it so far it uh, it's a little bit on the heavy side but you can expect that with a well-made product so I'm gonna put that into action again few more cuts, a few more limbs, and then we'll be stacking and cutting. Maybe not today, because we got to still take care of the slab rack. That'll be next. Here we go. on the other side of the log, but all that brush is there. If I was on the other side of the log, Oh, 
Right, guys well as you can see we got quite a few number of logs out of that one tree which is pretty impressive you know these red pines grow nice and straight so you get a lot of usable lumber out of them let's have a look at what we're dealing with these are nine foot sections just a little bit over because i got to account for uh just a little bit of trimming on the ends one two three four five good pieces out of there and i know this isn't the biggest tree diameter wise or the tallest but that's five logs times two that's 10 logs I'm gonna to get to make into lumber. So I'd say that's a pretty good day. Anyways, what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna hand bomb some of, these, uh, some of these sticks here into a pile. On the back of my tractor, I've got a chipper. We're gonna use that in just a minute. Before that though, I'm gonna take these logs, put them on the mill. Here we go. Up that way. And as I said, I got a chipper. And so I'm not gonna throw the brush too far into the bush because I'm gonna run it through the chipper and put all the chips on the trail. And I should probably put my safety glasses on. We all know what happens if you don't wear those at the worst time. Just stopping for a minute to talk to you guys a little bit about why I want to keep this relatively clean before I drive across it. The tractor doesn't have a lot of protection on the undercarriage. Not to mention I could end up putting something right through the radiator, hit the fan, who knows, right? So I like to keep this nice and clean because you never know when something like this is going to hit the tire and spring up at a wrong angle and pop through the tractor and cost me thousands. Especially with some of these branches that are under tension, I don't want them swinging back and giving that glass a smack. So I try to keep it nice and clean, at least the best I can and reasonably. I'm gonna pick up these logs now, get the rest of them up there. But uh, for the most part, that's pretty good.
Well, that's it. It's a nice little jag of logs. I think we're going to go and chip the debris, the leftovers, the branches. Then we're going to call it good. You guys can see what we're dealing with here. This is the WC68 by Woodland Mills. I've had this thing for a number of years now. It definitely, uh, well, it's definitely put some wood through it and come back swinging. So we're going to put it into action again today. Right, guys well we're all set up here and as i said we're going to chip some of the branches now i don't get in the habit of chipping everything if you guys can imagine if i were to chip every branch that came off every tree well i'd have more work than one man can do in their lifetime so i'm not going to do that i'm just going to take a few of these uh, branches run them through here reason being is it's a little bit wet here and now i've got chips that i can put right here so i'm going to do that as you guys are going to notice in a minute um, this chipper works really really well it does get bound up the odd time when I get too much of this stuff, too many needles or leaves and not enough wood. So periodically, if we've been uh, running some real thin branches through with a lot of needles, I'll just take a stick like this <clears throat> or a bigger piece of branch and I'll run it through just to keep things cleaned out. But anyways, let's talk more work. Let's get down to it. Here we go.
Well, guys, that's just about going to do it for me here today. As you can tell, we got a pretty good pile of chips here. There's a bit of bit of greenery mixed in, but those chips are going to go in some of the wet lying areas right under my tractor and going to make it nice and dry. Anyways, the WC68 worked really well. That thing is supposed to accept six inch material. We had a few pieces that were half decent size, maybe five inches or so. I don't find it struggles even at the biggest setting. Mind you, I've never run uh, hickory or something like that through it. But uh, I assume if the blades are sharp and you got the power with the tractor, it would take it. One thing to mention with this, it has a hydraulic in-feed roller. That is definitely what I would insist on if I was to get this again or get another one similar. Because you guys saw me feeding material in. I didn't have to force it in there. I just sort of put it there. The in-feed roller grabbed it, pulled it in, and I went and grabbed the next piece. Really makes things quick for me. Anyways, that is just the tops of two trees. If I had to chip those branches on every tree I cut down, I'd do nothing but that, and that's not what I'm into. So I'm going to leave it at that. There's a few branches still out there. We're going to call it good. One last thing I'm going to show you here. This is my HLA 66-inch root rake with grapple. This thing here has a hydraulic uh, cylinder here, which is connected to the uh, hydraulic connections on my loader. Those hoses go all the way back under my tractor cab to my rear remotes. I don't have a third function on my loader joystick. I don't have one. What I have is I have this joystick, which controls my rear remotes. So if you guys look at me as I'm using the grapple, I'm having to move my hand from the joystick for the loader down to the rear remotes uh, joystick and back again. So that's why things might not be 100% smooth. It's because I have to move my hand back and forth. Now I know they make a third function for the loader uh, joystick. I've looked into it, they're pricey, maybe one day. But for now, you guys can see those hoses coming all the way from the front loader to my rear remotes and those work just fine. Anyways, we got logs up there at the sawmill. Now I've got material I can cut. We are getting closer to the end of the equipment shed siding saga. I hope you guys come back for that. And I hope you check out the playlist dealing with that wood chipper if you're into that. Guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you give it the old like a -roo. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see all you guys next time.